Hello everyone, welcome out today. I'm Chris Miles, cash flow expert and the financial advocate for the entrepreneur uh, with Money Ripples here to welcome you out today and so excited to have you on because this is a fantastic topic and apparently a lot of you guys believe so as well. So I uh, appreciate you guys are here on live as well as those of you that will hear this recording later. Appreciate having you here because how to make money without money is something that I've had a lot of experience with and something that I'd love to be able to pass on to you guys as well and be able to serve you as much as I can. So uh, in any case, uh, as you guys know, as some of you participants know, there's ways to chat and interact. If you have questions, you can't hear me or something like that, please let me know. But uh, let's just dig right in. I want to make sure this is, this is coming at you hard and fast, um, not hard in the sense that it's going to be difficult, but simple, easy, and quickly so that you can find out how you can actually make money without money. You know, one thing that you hear me teach all the time, those of you that have, that have at least heard any of my teachings before, you hear me say often that cash flow creates freedom. What do I mean by cash flow? For those of you that haven't heard this before, cash flow means you've got way more income than expenses. Cash flow is the difference between income and expenses. When income's here, expenses are here, you're happy. When it's reversed, expenses are up here, income's down here, this is not fun, right? This is not cool. Yay, boo, right? Woohoo, uh, right? That kind of stuff, right? So cash flow, we want to have as much positive cash flow as possible. And especially in this particular topic, I mean, I've teached people lots of ways about how to find and free up cash. Many of you guys know that. I just did a webinar, you know, just earlier this week about how to have extra cash for the holiday season, things like that, how you can free up more money. And yes, my average clients freed up $33,000 in their first year alone. That's both income made as well as expenses saved. And so, uh, so anyways, I want to focus on the income side of things because this is the part that's limitless. And this is the part that a lot of people believe that you have to have money to make money. The thing is that's simply just not true. And I know you can already prove it. All, each of you, I bet, have already proven this point to not be true. That you didn't need money to make money. Because if that were the case, how did you ever survive high school or college when you were not making a lot of money? Because how many of you on here, and, and go ahead and hit in the chat, how many of you were at least a broke high school or college student at some point? Go ahead and type in that chat and let me know. Mark says, yep. Lucetta says, absolutely, yes, right? Yes, for Vicky as well. I know Julie Anders is talking, and the other people, broke lawyer, awesome, yuppers. Yeah, see, if it really took money to make money, how do we ever survive, right? How do we get to a place where at least we're probably, I would guarantee that most of us, if not all of us, are making more money today than we were as high school or college students? And that's because it's simply not true. You know, any time that you really come down to it, it comes down to the simple principle I teach all the time, is that dollars follow value. Dollars follow the value you create for other people. The more value you have to offer, the more people are willing to pay. You know, that's the biggest thing. It's based on how people value you, and they want to exchange dollars to have you in their life. And so I want to talk about how you really go about doing that, because we want to make sure that we're always increasing value. We're always able to do that. You know, and the thing is, we all have our unique way of doing it. I believe we all have this unique fingerprint that we can leave, this unique blueprint of sorts that we can use that allows us to be able to create the maximum amount of value for the maximum amount of people, or at least the people that we desire to serve, whatever that number may look like, and however that may look like in your life. That's the beautiful thing, is that we all have these unique abilities and traits and, and, and ways of going out creating value. You know, once upon a time, before I was the cash flow expert, um, this is years ago, 15 years ago, I used to be a, one of the nation's top amateur ballroom dancers. I used to compete and do those sort of things. And I remember that, uh, that over, you know, I was one of those guys that started out dancing when I was 18. I was a late bloomer, so to speak, right? I only did it actually because I needed a one credit class in college to get me to be a full-time student so I could, you know, be able to maximize the scholarship needs and things like that. And, uh, and so I needed one credit class. I figured I already had a PE class. What else could I do? I picked a dance class, especially because somebody told me there's a lot of girls in that class. Uh, what was interesting is I really stunk in the beginning. But over time, as I started to practice, get more and more better at this. Next thing you know, I started to get on like the dance teams at the, the universities and such. Um, I even got onto the world championship team that won Blackpool, England, when we won the world championship for formation teams. I um, was on that team two years in a row both my junior and senior year of college. And it was a lot of fun. And, uh, but there was one teacher that said, hey, we can make this even better. And she got me to start doing things right. 
And so as I started to gain some more knowledge, plus I started to apply my gifts in, in dancing, because I wasn't the best athlete, I wasn't the best dancer by far, and I definitely wasn't practicing the most amount of hours. In fact, uh, I mean, I started when I was 18. There's a lot of people starting when they were three or four. I mean, there's people dancing when they could barely walk. And uh, what was interesting is I started to beat those people in competitions. Even if they've danced for years, sometimes even a couple decades longer than me, I was still able to beat many of them in competition. Not just because I was more athletic or anything else, but because I was able to take some, some of these things I'm about to teach you today, take these and apply them in a way that allowed me to accelerate my progress and accelerate my results. And that's what I want to help you do today as well. So value flow creates freedom. I said cash flow, but ultimately if you come down to it, when I said dollars follow value, it's value flow that creates freedom. The more you're able to provide value, the more freedom you can receive, the more freedom you can have, the more money you actually make. But what happens, a lot of us get to this point of frustration. We feel like we're hitting our heads against the wall. I mean, how many of you guys have ever felt frustrated? How many, first of all, how many of you are business owners? Say yes or no in the comments. I want to see how many of you guys have a business, whether it's on the side, full-time, whatever it might be. Yes, yes, yes. We got several more typing. Yes, my own and your husband's. Wow, just started it. Good, Mark. Yes, yes, yes. So you guys are all pretty much business owners, right? You know, this is the beautiful thing. If you're a business owner, it's much easier to make money without money. Now, even if you're an employee, <laughs> even if you're an employee, you know, the cool thing is, is that you're able to, to even apply this as well. So even if you were in a corporate environment or you have a part-time business with a job on the side, this works both ways. It can transition both directions. But as a business owner, you see things firsthand. I mean, you guys realize quickly that, you know, if something works, you see the, the results. If it doesn't work, you see the results too, right? Um, you see also what people will say yes or no to. Where if you work a corporate job, you don't always see that because you might be disconnected from your customers or your clients. In business, that's not the case. And so you see things pretty quick in real time. And so, uh, so what happens, a lot of times you get frustrated. And even if you do what you do really well, I mean, how many of you guys have ever felt frustrated in business? Maybe you felt like you're not making enough money. Maybe you felt like you're, you're working and doing what you love, but it's not quite clicking. You feel like there's still something missing. Have any of you guys felt that as well all the time? Yep. Every day? Yeah. By the way, welcome to business owner land. First off, congratulations, you're human. Because even I feel frustration in my business from time to time. And sometimes I'll even say there's a glimpse every single day that I'll feel scarcity or frustration, and that's normal. It's normal to feel those kind of things. The trick is, is how do we infuse passion back in, how do we make things work, how do we make it really happen. Um, this is where I wish I had Annette on because uh, she's helped me a lot personally with when I experience frustration, how to overcome that. And I'll talk more about, about her as well, like I mentioned. So here's the secret ingredient. You guys ready? Here's how you make money without money. You guys ready for this? Here's the, here's, here it is, SPARF. <laughs> Sounds awesome, doesn't it? Does it sound like something your cat threw up on the carpet, right? So SPARF, SPARF is the equation to make money without money. Because I'll tell you, one of my worst times of my life that I had, the worst frustration I ever felt financially, was back in 2000, about the end of 2007 till about the end of the summer of 2009. I was going through the hardest financial time of my life. So even though I started to discover a lot of these things, and a lot of these things I'm teaching you here today were things I started to discover, especially in 2008 for myself personally, and even started teaching it more. Um, but I started to realize that even though I was able to retire back in 2006 and retired and became a millionaire, well, thanks to the Great Recession, I went from millionaire to upside down millionaire. I went from massive positive cash flow all of a sudden now to a place where I was in the hole $16,000 a month and about almost about a million dollars in debt. It was insanely crazy. And if you can imagine trying to do what you love while in that situation, it really sucks, to put it lightly, right? It was a horrible situation. It was lots of fear and stress and concern. Collectors calling multiple times a day. You know, my wife was saying, hey, maybe I should move out with my kids, move into my sister's house so you can figure things out. I mean, she's threatening to leave. Lots of crazy stuff were going on during that period of time. And, you know, even, even as hard as those times were, it was also one of the best times to get resourceful. Because it's not about how many resources you have, it's how resourceful you are with those resources you're given. I hope you really understand that. It's, that it's not about the resources you have, it's the resources that you have within yourself to be able to produce and create. 
that production, that creation, that, that value creation you do for other people, how you can solve problems, how you can serve people, and how you can ultimately show up in a way to add value in people's lives is the key to be able to do that. This equation, SPARF, is the one I created back in 2008 and 2009 as I was digging back out of that hole because I had no money, no credit. I mean, my credit was miserable. I think it got down to like about a 500 credit score. I mean, there's people with you know, there's people that have horrible SAT scores that score higher than my credit score, right? I mean, it was that bad. I mean, it was horrible. And so, I mean, things were in a place where I had nothing. All I had was what was within myself. And I'll tell you, that was the best time to learn about me because I didn't have all the stuff and all the things to distract from me. I realized that when the stuff was gone, I was exposed, I was vulnerable, and I had to show up in a way and solve problems. And that's where this comes in. So this equation, SPARF, is the key to be able to do this. All right, so hopefully you're taking notes because we're going to go a little fast here. All right, here's the actual equation of SPARF. It's S times P times A times R times F, just like you see on the screen here. S times P times A times R times F. All right, so let's go through what each of these mean because these are all essential. These are all critical for you to be able to get this. Number one is strengths. That first bar letter is S for strengths. This is really where your raw materials show up. You know, it's like, what is it you really have to offer? Now, many people will see weaknesses in themselves much easier than, than they see strengths. I want to know what your unique, unique gifts or talents are. One of the things you do really well. And here's the ways you can discover what these strengths are. And I know I'm giving some real basic information here, but I want to get, at least give you a place to start is first and foremost is, you know, what do you do really well? I mean, this is the obvious, but this, I'm going to start simple here. What do you do really well? What do people ask you to do all the time? Do they ask you to do something or do they ask you for information? Here's a key. If you have people saying over and over asking you to do the same things or asking you for the same information or same experiences, they say, hey, how, how did you do this or how did you do that or could you do this for me? If you hear this question over and over, I call this Get a clue because, <laughs> I mean, if you're hearing this over and over, it means because people are, they see the value in you. Many people will see value in other people better than they see in themselves. If they see something, they're going to ask you for it. So offer it to them. Give it to them. But here's the cool thing. You can actually charge money for it. I was just talking this to uh, uh, Adise Boucher the other day, my mama. Some of you might know her. She was saying that she didn't even intend to do her vivid life map when she initially did it. She said, I didn't do it. It's like people just kept people just asked me how I did my boards, and it, and I got them to work, and they kept coming to me all the time. And finally, I had to just start charging money, and that's what she had said said to me just yesterday. And I said, that's exactly what people should be doing. If people are asking you to do something over and over, or ask you for information over and over, if they ever say, "Can I pick your brain? Can I take you out to lunch or something like that?" This is stuff that you need to be charging for. So look for those strengths. People do not hire you for your weaknesses, they hire you for your strengths. And I know there's, there's oftentimes there's certain people that will tell me, well, Chris, I got to turn my strength, my weaknesses into strengths. You know, so I got to focus on my weaknesses. False. You do not. The way to turn your weaknesses into strengths is focusing on developing your strengths and making them massive strengths and gifts and abilities. And when you can take a combination of strengths, woohoo, there goes my mic. <laughs> when you can take a combination of strengths, and start to put them together in a way that you become uniquely you, that no one else can compete with you. This is where you start to find a niche. And as, as you hear people say, it's that niche that will make you rich. How do you find those, those unique strengths, that combination of strengths that nobody else on this planet has? How can you serve people in a way that no one else can, taking these strengths and allowing them to show up? This is what allows you to be able to make massive amounts of money. For me in my own life, I realized that people kept asking me, they said, Chris, I would love to pay you for what you teach about money, but I can't find the money. So what did I do? I said, great, let me, I, I bet you I can find the money. I've been in a hole way worse than you've ever been. I'm sure if I had your situation, it would be way easier for me than what I had to deal with. And I would show people how to find the money, and then all of a sudden I was justifying how I got paid. And so all of a sudden I became the cash flow expert because people kept asking me how to create cash flow today, not how do I save or eventually retire. They didn't care about that. They said, what about now? Because if I have more money today, I could eventually retire later too. Does that make sense? So how many of you guys feel like you're, you're really tuned in on what your strengths are uh, on a scale of 1 to 10? Saying 1, like 
I have no clue what they are, and 10, like, I know everything about myself. I'm a brilliant genius, and I'm amazing. <laughs> wow, good. Okay, good. Got some good mid-ranges. You ever say a 10, I would, say, I would call bull on you because I'm still discovering stuff, and I'm doing it all the time. So, Awesome. Good. Awesome. Now, how many of you guys still feel frustrated sometimes you don't know how to get those strengths to pay you? Anybody like that? Yep, exactly. All right. This is why we're going to move on then because it's not just about having strengths because strengths alone isn't enough. This is where P comes in, which is passions, right? What are you really passionate about? What drives you? What fuels you? What really allows you to develop and grow, right? What's that thing that really lights, lights your fire? What, what can you do all day long and not tire? What, what do you find yourself doing that sometimes in, late into the night you're like, wow, where did the time go? That was awesome. Do you, you guys ever have that moment? If you do, you're on to something, right? This is also, now I've had some people tell me, like, Chris, I don't have any passions. I'm not like people. I don't get excited. I'm not that kind of person. Okay, fine. That's great. And I, I remember one guy actually told me that. You know, he said, Chris, I don't get excited about anything. I, I, I think people that get excited are kind of lame. I said, all right, great. Anything tick you off? Like, what, what really ticks you off? Oh, now I'll tell you. Like, uh, you know, I hate when people pick on my family. Okay, good. Why? You know, and we started to dig into that. He had, was passionate about, about loyalty and family and connection and relationships. I'm like, good. There we go. There's a passion there. What else are you ticked off about? Politics. I hate politicians. And he starts going on about that. I'm like, great. So writing these things down. Passion, 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 passion. Passion everywhere. It's like pee and passion, right? And so uh, we started to find out he had lots of passion. He just didn't identify as like, woohoo, you know, like getting all excited, you know, like Jojo the Circus Clown or whatever, right? He wasn't like that. It was simply just he was fired up about different things. He's fired up in a different way. And we could find passions. Now, passion is an amplifier to your strengths. You need passion because this is the accelerator. This is what happened for me in ballroom dancing because even though I had certain strengths, see, I had gifts, for example. I'm really good at always trying to perfect things. I like to build a better mousetrap. I like to tweak things. I don't necessarily like to create from scratch. I like to take something and then tweak it and master it and make it better, right? So I'm really good about creating those kind of things. I'm also good about seeing things that don't seem like they correlate. This is why I do so well with money because people won't see correlation. I'm like, look, bring them together. And boom, you made money, right? This also worked in dancing, too. I'd say, hey, you're doing this, but we could also do this, too. And, oh, these two connect, and I could learn faster. Um, I also retain a lot of useless information. This is why I almost, I almost got onto the show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I got into the semifinals of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire back in 2000. Um, weird things about me, I know. Um, you know, things like that. But I'll tell you, the passion, the, when I started to really love the dance, when I started to love what I was learning and doing, I mean, not to mention you get to dance with girls. I mean, that's kind of cool too, right? All of a sudden, my abilities increased faster. See, a lot of people are dancing since they're three or four. We're doing it and almost got bored of it. It almost became like a job. It's like professional athletes. All of a sudden, they just get to a point where it's like a job, and they stop progressing, stop growing. Passion amplifies your strengths. It allows you to be more of who you already are and do it faster. You master it faster. I've seen people with gifts similar to mine, but not mastering them or not being passionate about it, and then they just kind of wither away. Passion's got to be there. And so really ask yourself, what are you passionate about? Because this is got to be there if you're going to allow your strengths to grow. And I'll tell you, passion is contagious. It's infectious. People want to work people that love what they do, not people that look at it like a job, like the Walmart, you know, like the Walmart check-in people on, on, you know, coupon Tuesday or whatever, you know, a double coupon Tuesday. And then they're like, uh, beep, 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 you know, you don't want to be that person. And I can guarantee that probably a lot of you are passionate about what you're doing, but how can you take other aspects of your passion and other passions and infuse it back into your business? That's what makes it fun. Makes it a, how many of you guys would love to have more passion in your business, more passion overall? So I bet you a lot of you probably feel like you need to throw in more to it, right? Even if you've got some, you probably want more, right? Good. So this is essential. Okay. Oops, skipped one. Next one, you have strengths and you have passions. And when you put them together, you really start to develop something that is unique. And you can start from here and trust me, no one can compete with you at this level, except if you're not putting it into action. If you only have strengths and passions and that's all you put together and you don't put it into action, 
what you have is a big ego. You get this. You become arrogant, not relevant in people's lives. You know, you ever you ever run to those people that say, yeah, "I'm the best at what I do. I'm amazing at this and this," and I can't stand this person that's more popular than me that's out there serving less people. I can't stand it. And I don't get why people don't come to me. You know, and they get all bitter about it, and they'll say, "I'm so much better than them." Right? You know, have you ever seen that before? You guys ever met those people? Hopefully, you guys aren't those people, right? If you've ever said that, well, guess what? We have the answer. Action's got to be essential. So, anyways, that's a that's a big key, right? All right, now I'm going to let Annette. She's typing in right now. I'm going to let her pipe in with just a little bit on action because action is essential. We got to put this stuff into motion. But uh, Annette, what would you like to add? Okay. There we go. All right. Okay, so let me. Uh... Okay, so and that says on action, only nine percent of the population is designed to just go do it and make it happen. Yes. Oh, I love it. You're bringing this up. That means that ninety percent of the population is not designed to just go do it. Here's. Let me explain more what she's talking about here. She says thirty-three percent is designed to inform and wait to respond. 37% are designed to wait to respond, and 20% are designed to wait for the invitation. It is critical you understand your design so you know how to take action and when to take action. This is why you need to know your divine blueprint. If you do not know your blueprint and how you are designed, it will lead to bitterness, anger, frustration, and, and resentment. So, absolutely. So when I talk about taking action, the great thing about this is that there's a unique way that you all should take action. I mean, here's the one thing that's frustrating about um, a lot of business coaching, uh, both that I've been a part of as well as that's been taught to me. Um, in business coaching, many times people will say, if you just do these specific strategies, then everything will work out. If you notice that I've given you a few examples of how I've gone about doing this myself, this does not mean you have to carbon copy everything I do. This is why you have to understand yourself uniquely. You know, along with these gifts and these strengths that you have, you have to understand who you are at the core how you best operate, how you best work, and how you best do these things so it doesn't lead to more anger and frustration. Because how many of you, and type this in, have any of you been frustrated that you've tried to imitate somebody you respect, whether it be a coach, a mentor, could be just somebody in your own industry or somebody in general in business, try to imitate them and then it doesn't work out for you the same way. Anybody ever been there? Okay, so pretty much all of you. Good, so you're human as well. Here's what I would say. There's two things that are going to lead to this. One could be your mindset. Your mindset could be stopping you from seeing results, right? You might be able to do the same strategies, but the mindset's not there. Um, I teach people all the time that it's principles first, strategy second. You've got to understand the core principles first before you try to do strategies. This applies to action especially. But the second thing is what Annette's been saying is that you are designed to act and operate differently than some people. Some of you are not meant to be the make it happen, let's go, 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 go kind of people. Some of you are more like, a, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking something here. I'm feeling something, but I need to get feedback. So many, so many of you, actually what we're talking about here at the end of this webinar, many of you have actually said, uh, when I said, hey, how many of you have loved how, how to make more money and monetize your gifts and your genius and actually make money from that? And a ton of people said, yes, absolutely. When I got that response, I said, hmm, now I'll take action. I wasn't just thinking and then took action. I wanted to get some feedback. I wanted to get response. Notice I'm asking feedback from you right now, and that allows us to do this. You know, it allows me to dig deeper and give you more and more of what you want. And so when you take action, you got to be more to you. We're not going to get into all that here because that alone could take some time because each of you are individual. But just know that each of you can take action differently. It's okay. You don't have to do the exact same things as other successful people. You can do it your way, and your way will be the best way. All right, so let me move on to relationships here. By the way, just to check in right now, anybody get something of value up to this point? Anything from strengths, passions, or even just this last conversation on action? Good. Awesome, actions, good. All right, so let's move to R. So R right here is relationships. It's one thing to take action, but how you take action with your relationships is key. Remember I said dollars follow value. Well, ultimately, dollars follow the value you create for other people. In 2006, what got me to really retire wasn't just because I had these great financial strategies or anything. Yeah, I learned some financial strategies, but the main thing I focused on, I like 
honed in on. And this is something you really want to write down and ingrain within yourself. And those of you who have been in my other trainings, you've heard me say it time and time again. And trust me, it can be said many more times and it still will never be enough. <laughs> you know, I said dollars follow value. My real thinking, the real question I was asking myself behind that, that statement was, how can I create a win-win for people? How can I give people what they want? What do they want? How can I serve them? How can I show up? This is why you've got to understand what strengths you have to offer and what you're passionate about. By the way, just having a strength does not mean you have to do it. This should be a comfort to a lot of you. Just because you're gifted at something doesn't mean you have to do it. you got to have passion to go with it. I was an amazing stock coach. Many of you may not know, I used to train people how to, tra to trade stocks and options in the markets. But you know what? I eventually lost passion for it. I can still do it. And I can do it well. And there's ways I can infuse passion into it if I'm given enough freedom to teach it how I want to teach it. But if somebody says, here, here's our curriculum. you got to teach it this way, I just lose interest. I'm like, eh. Even if I could do it, even if I had like 50 or 60 coaches, I was like the top of the top two rated coaches. It doesn't matter. You know, and that's rated coaches by the clients, right? And so it didn't matter. It, it didn't matter if I'm gifted at it if I don't have passion. So you've got to serve people with these gifts. This is where they actually comes in. This is why people will say, like, oh, I hate that this person so and so is doing this better than I am. They can start to get that envy or jealousy. The only difference ultimately is that they're using their relationships. They're marketing themselves better. They're showing their brand and how they show up. And by the way, marketing is not just posting on Facebook or posting ads or websites. It's not about that at all. It's how you brand yourself, how you show up in the world. I mean, Annette is an amazing example. And even Edith Boucher, as we're talking about here a little bit later, I mean, these two women are amazing examples of people that don't have to go out and market. People will come to them, and they're totally cool with it. And so it's, it's not about that. It's about how you show up to serve. You've got to serve with more relationships. And guess what? Guess what allows you to be able to use your strengths and passions more, especially develop your strengths to be better and better strengths to the point you start creating this massive niche. The only way you can do that is by serving over and over, by mastering your gifts, mastering your talents. See, those people that, even if they may not do it as well as other people, the fact remains they're still serving people and creating value. You know, I make fun of Dave Ramsey a little bit, right? I mean, I make fun about the whole, you know, living off rice and beans scarcity paradigm that he teaches. But... I will tell you that, and you've heard, if you've ever heard me publicly say this, is that I say all the time that I admire the guy. Not to mention I do agree with about half of what he teaches, but I admire the fact that he is serving a lot of people. He has the systems in place to do it. He has the relationships, and he's doing it. That's the thing. There's been a lot of people's lives blessed, even people that I know that their lives have been blessed by what he's taught. Sure, I can take it to a whole other level, but that's another story. He's still creating a buttload of value. And that's essential. It's about the relationships, how you show up, and not showing up how you can use relationships, but instead showing up how you can serve those people. And I'll tell you, I remember I had one relationship. The thing that got me out of the hole in 2009 is I started to develop my cash flow process. And I remember there was, there was a, you know, at that time I was working with a guy named, guy named Garrett Gunderson. He was, he was the partner in the company, and, and he was struggling as well. And, uh, and at that time, as I started to develop the cash flow process, something that worked, he started to create, create some new relationships, one of which was a guy named Pat Gentempo, who was in the chiropractic market. And I remember you know, meeting Pat, and Pat just said, hey, I've got some other coaches that work with me in the chiropractic world. You know, let me introduce a few of them to you. And so they joined our program. What was cool is we just barely created a cash flow official process of how I could take people through cash flow. And uh, man, I remember one of those guys, we found uh, over $100,000, I think it was $110,000 of taxes he overpaid over the previous three years. You can imagine he was pretty excited. I uh, had another guy, we found about fifty or 60000 plus on top of that, I think another twenty. So it was about seventy or 80000 by the end of that year. And I, had, I hadn't even finished coaching him. I was only halfway in, and, and he was so excited, he just ran off and told everybody, um, which was great. You know? It was like the ten lepers, but you know, the other nine running off, but, uh, you know, but he, uh, he actually brought people back, which is great. And so from that one relationship with Pat, we were able to create and generate and pretty much at least $5 million over the next couple years because of one relationship we created value for. That is why it's so essential to relationships that show up and serve and be able to give people the value they need and, hey, be willing to ask for value in return. So relationships is essential. I cannot stress this one enough. And then the last one, F, is faith. Faith, I don't just mean like religious faith, although they can be related. Faith is, what I mean is, the, the ability to keep moving forward, the ability to act upon this. 
And even for, like what Annette says, because I know she's thinking it right now, I, I can hear it. It's, you know, it could be waiting and responding. It's, it's the ability to actually go and do. That It's an action verb. It's to be. It's to show up and, and, and ultimately have the faith to know that what you're doing is valuable. What you're doing is blessing lives. What you're doing is ultimately creating happiness for you and other people. And really, you're leaving this, this, like I said, a fingerprint on the planet that blesses more lives. That is essential. You've got to have that faith to move forward because you can have all the right elements. But if all of a sudden you don't believe, it, not even just believing, even to the point of having a knowingness, you know through and through that you can make this work, that you are here for a reason, that you were designed for a reason. You were designed to help specific people in a way that no one else on this planet can. When you have that kind of faith, watch what happens. For some of us, we might be missing this very faith. We might have all the right elements. We could have the strengths, all the passion in the world. We could be taking action and serving people. But until we actually have the faith to keep moving forward, to keep going, even if we don't want to get up, give up sometimes. And by the way, guess what? Even I get those feelings and temptations sometimes to say, you know what? I just throw in the towel. Maybe I'm done. You know, does anybody really care? And I tell you, every time I ask that question, somebody will pipe up randomly and say, oh my goodness, you have made my day, made my week, you have blessed my life so much, thank you so much. Then I'm like, oh, I guess I better keep doing this. And there's, there's so many people whose lives you're blessing, you don't even know. The people may not be responding to you, they may not be telling you that you're blessing them. In fact, I guarantee the majority of people don't tell you that. They don't tell you thank you. They just are loving you from a distance. They might feel like they know you better than you know them, and that's probably true. You know, I know that's true for me and it's true for you, but that faith to keep moving forward, to never give up, to keep doing it who you are. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Denise. I appreciate that too. Love you too. So uh, that faith to show up. When you combine all these elements together, that is where you start to have real passion. And all that good stuff that all combined. So review strengths times passion. Action. <laughs> times your relationships and times your faith. Spark. That is key. That is essential. I want to end. I want to start kind of wrapping up this quote here. This is by a guy named J. Richard Clark. Um, this guy actually was actually a really wealthy guy. Owned an insurance company. Very, uh, very cool. He's also a religious leader too. And I love this. He says, "Too often people find it easier to adjust to a tighter budget than to find ways to generate additional income." Here's my favorite phrase from this. Is it possible that our members are becoming part of a conspiracy for medioc mediocrity by being content with their present knowledge and skills? Let me read that again. Is it possible that our members are becoming part of a conspiracy by with their present knowledge and skills? You know, how many of us are just becoming content? And I love what he says. Pride of workmanship has always been the heart of a competitive free enterprise system. There are too many tradesmen who will not pay the price to become craftsmen, teachers who do not teach, Repairmen who do not repair, farmers who do not farm, leaders who do not lead, and problem solvers in every field who do not solve problems. The only honorable way for each of us to share in the world's wealth is to exchange good, our own goods and services for those produced by someone else. And then he finishes by saying you know, that we would be in demand everywhere and could command premium compensation if we would accept the challenge to set a standard of quality unique. Excellence. That is the power we want to bring to the table, is how are we bringing that unique excellence? What can we do to combine those gifts in a way that allows it to happen? Okay, Annette, you want to make a few points as we're starting to wrap up here. I'd love to hear them since I asked you to give these points earlier. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to scroll up here. There we go. Okay. What is worth your time? What does the world need that your talent provides? That is really all you have. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible. Ooh, that's a good one. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible. How many of us are trying to become accepted? Risk being seen in all your glory. Risk taking off your mask. Risk living authentically. Risk trusting yourself. Stop operating from fear and create, creating the stance that I am not enough. Take on the chance of doing what you love. 
when you don't know who you are and how you operate, you are driven to create something that isn't authentically you. Anything we create will not be sustainable if we're creating from an inauthentic place. You can only pretend for so long. It is, it is about being. What we be is what we add to the world. And what we and what you, the world, the place, and what you add to the world, the place that only you can hold, is crucial for the evolution and peace on this planet. Well said, Annette. I love that. And it's one thing. See, showing up as who you truly are is essential. Not trying to impress, not trying to be more of something and something that you're not. It's about how we can truly show up, be that. So, what's that secret to success? You know, like I said, when I was doing ballroom dancing, one gift that teaching that that ability to teach other people, to be able to give them something of value, to be able to help them, to, be able to allow them to show up, to have greater, you know, that, that greater gift, I would encourage them. Where many people in the dancing world would criticize, I would encourage, I would try to build them up. And I would take, take those things. And I would take the things that ultimately were about me and, and the things that I learned, shorten the time frame, maybe I'll help them learn it faster. And that was a gift. And what's funny is the more I taught, the more I learned. The more I mastered it. And the more I was able to master it. And so this is the key right here is that we need to do that. Okay, so how do we do this? This is, this is what we've created. This is something I'm so excited about. In fact, although I love cash flow, I've been waiting for this for years. This is something I used to do a lot of training on back around 2008, 2009, and even into 2010. And I stopped teaching about that point. I kind of let it go. I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to teach about cash flow only and just keep it focused. But I've been waiting to teach something like this forever because this is at the core of who I am. You know, for me, uh, one of the biggest epiphanies that happened for me was when I was starting to apply this myself. And I remember I got, I got invited to go to a, a network marketing company to meet with two of the founders of a network marketing company that was a billion dollar business. Billion dollars. Now, at this time, I was still struggling financially. I was trying to make a comeback still. And I got invited to their office. And I remember sitting in their foyer in their lobby. And this lobby was decked to the hilt. Amazing. And I remember sitting there. I remember as I had my arm on the couch, my hands, my palms were sweating like crazy. It's really yucky, right? And I'm sitting there. I'm nervous. And, think, and I remember the voice came in saying, who do you think you are? And I remember just as soon as that went out, the response came back to me that says, Chris, you know who you are. You have unique gifts and abilities that nobody else has. Now go exchange with your brothers. And I remember that hit me hard. I was like, yeah, I'm a human just like them. We've got strengths. We've got weaknesses. We're both here to create something massive and amazing. There is no difference. There is no pit or pestle. I'm not in the pit and they're on. Or vice. There is no comparison because I have these unique gifts that nobody else has. And so do they. And I said, awesome. And so I went upstairs. Remember, I had a conversation with them. The, the nervousness left. And then lo and behold, what happened? We had a fun time, enjoyed it. We felt like colleagues, not like me begging and trying to figure out what's, uh, you know, what I am or what I'm not. That's the cool thing is that we were uniquely who we are. And that's the thing is that you can show up with great power when you start to do this. This is why we've created this two-day workshop how to discover and monetize your genius. First, you got to know the, the key things. A lot of you guys around, you know, six, seven, eight, maybe even nine. But I can guarantee you there's some things deeper. And like Annette said, what about your human design, how you're created? How should you act and operate in a way that's right to you? Not just with all the other business stuff that's out there telling you, hey, you should do it this way. Do it just like me. Well, guess what? We're not just like you because I'm not like them and they're not like me. You know, that's why I laugh when people get jealous. I have people come up to me sometimes in the financial world saying, I, I gotta be honest, it's frustrating to know that you're out there and then I'm I feel like I'm invisible. And I'm like, what are you jealous of? You can't compete with me. Yeah, I'm awesome. I'm amazing at what I do, but I can't compete with you either. So what are you freaking out about? Like that's not the point. Like show up and serve. Stop worrying about me. Worry about you. And that's what we're really trying to do is like, how do we discover what these gifts are? So we're going through those strengths. We're going through passions. We're trying to find out those values because values, you violate values, you can suck the passion right out of your business. And how much money does that cost you, right? 
you know, we go into like, what's your mission? Not just a mission of your business, but your life. What do you really, what do you truly stand for? Who are you and what do you stand for? So we create a very easy mission statement. These are things I've refined over hundreds of people. And, and man, I've gotten some amazing results, not just from me, but from other people going out and living that genius. It's awesome. So just discovering first who you are and how you can show up uniquely. This is where you, Annette comes up with training saying, hey, let's do this human design to figure out how you're uniquely set up and use that and let that show up in your business. This is something brand new that even people that did my Find Your Divine Genius course, that webinar I did last year, guess what? This is all new stuff that you haven't gotten yet. On top of that, the next day, day two, we're talking about how to monetize it. So we're showing up like, hey, how do we actually figure out what problems we can solve uniquely that we're passionate about and that we can actually do really, really well? Not just well, but amazingly well, where we have that niche. How can we find that and apply that? Even if you have a business, how can we integrate that into your business in a way that shows up and you can take it from that idea to an actual, real, something that's generating money? And this is where Adis Boucher, the new money mama, comes in as well. So we've got this powerhouse team of three mentors between Annette, Adis, and myself to build, bring this to the table to help you discover and do this. And this is not something you sit around and listen. This is something you're actually going and doing. You're starting to write down. You're starting to capture. We're having you do all these kind of cool things to allow you to have this experience to understand who you are and how you can best show up, show up and serve other people. Uh, plus, for those that actually end up registering here with this early bird that we're going to be doing, this promotion we're doing. By the way, this is officially being launched on this webinar right now. Um, the bonus, you get a master marketing audio training that I did last year. Um, this training is actually a webinar I did exactly a year ago, which is how to get people to talk about you behind your back in a good way. How do you get people to promote you even when you're not there? How do you get people talking and say, man, that person is amazing. Man, that, that Mike Carlson, he's awesome. I mean, I love how he talks about the, the, the bathroom all the time, but man, he's great here and here, and you should get him. And so by the time that Mike shows up, he's already got a reputation that people want to get to know him and want to get him to serve. I love the fact that three years ago, after I launched Money Ripples, I had people asking me to speak. They said, I don't even know what you speak about. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you don't? No, but I want to have you speak. What do you talk about? And I mean, that was cool, but having that reputation precede me was awesome, especially when I had a two-year non-compete. I had to create brand new relationships three years ago, and now I never worry about speaking. I have to turn people down at this point. So master marketing, that, that secret that worked for me in my business, even when I had a two-year non-compete, how I was able to create a six-figure business in the first year, that's part of that training, plus find, how to find $300 a month each and every month by Adis Boucher is part of that too. And we create a private Facebook group page where people can actually bounce ideas off each other. And I imagine after this workshop, when you start to understand some of these things, like, hey, I'm finding this out or this out, what do you guys think? And be able to bounce off ideas, especially if you're not the person, like Annette was saying, where we're designed to wait and respond and get feedback. Critical to be able to have a place you can bounce those ideas. So that's what I said. That's the Find Your Divine Genius right there. So 847 is a total that would normally, if you just bought all these things separate, but, and again, I used to charge 500 bucks just to teach this stuff, 500 bucks a person to teach this stuff, and that was really just day one of what we're doing. Now we're doing two days, some extra stuff. And by the way, I used to teach that day one in three days. That's how much we got it refined and done. But it's going to be 197 bucks. That's the early bird price, just 197. Man, that's per person. If you have couples, I would encourage couples to come with husband and wife. Oh, man, can you imagine what this would do for your marriage if you guys understand each other at a better level? Oh, regardless of business, how valuable would that be? And on top of that, what if you could do this in business? How many people are you turning away right now because you're not living that divine genius? What if you lose one customer this year and that's all? Just lose one. What would that cost you? You know, what if you could show up and actually show up more powerfully and people are like, who is this person? Like, where do they come from? You know, it's like the Grease 2 song. Who's that guy? Where did he come from? Like, it's kind of like that, right? Don't ask me where that came from. It's the weirdness of my brain. But in uh, any case, that's the cool thing. So 197 bucks is where we're doing it. The website, I forgot to put this on the slide here. The website is www.find, or sorry, uh, www.yourdivinegenius.com. I'll type that in here in the notes here. Uh, yourdivinegenius.com. You can actually go there and register. You can pay with PayPal or whatever else, but... I encourage you to register now. We're only we're maxing this out about 40 people. That's it. We want to make this more intimate, something where you guys can be conducive to growing and learning together. Um, love to have you there. Um, love to have you there. Um, even if you've done some of this stuff before, trust me, this is some new things. This is why I brought Annette and Adise together. I said, hey, guys, 
here's something that I've had a passion and mission about for a while. Here's how I think you guys can play and show up. And I'll tell you, each of these women are incredible. Um, and each of them have a very specific role, just as well as I do, to make this something that is just unprecedented. I don't think there's anything out there that I've seen quite to this level. Julie, awesome. I'd love to see that you're going. So, yeah, yourdivinegenius.com is where it is. 197 is the, the, the price that we're doing right now, at least. Um, I guarantee in the future, when we decide to do this again, it probably be maybe once a year, if that. Um, but if we do it again, it's going to be much, much more. So love to have you there. Is this something that resonates with you? You want to get deeper on this? You feel like you have a passion and you have a mission and something to, to bring to the world that's bigger. And you don't want your business to be about business, but something much, much more. The core of who you are and what you're doing, I encourage you to come. Because like I said, it's cash flow and joy that creates freedom. What use is having all the money in the world if you don't get joy from it? If you can have more passion infused in what you do and have more joy and be able to do this uniquely as who you are, not just as what people tell you should be doing, but showing up who you are as an individual and how you can best show up and create value and serve people and bless lives in this world, that's what it's all about. So everybody, thank you so much for your time today. I hope this is valuable. For you guys that are still on here on the chat, was this good? Is this good stuff? Did you walk away with anything you could take action on? Yes. Very awesome. Yes. Well, cool. All right, lots of other testing. Yes, and thank you. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Again, remember, yourdivinegenius.com. Go there. 197. Again, only 40 seats. I did this as a webinar last year. 20 seats. They sold out in a, in a day or two. So, please, this is a live event. It's going to be, oh, this is a live event going to be in South Jordan, Utah, just to let you know because some of you guys will wonder. This is a live event where you're actually here with us, training with us over these two days. Nine to five both days. We don't like to have late nights. We actually like to sleep. So uh, in any case, love to have you there. If it resonates, go to yourdivinegenius.com. Annette, thank you so much for being on as well. You've been awesome. Everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful day.